In order to add text to a text box, simply double click and you'll notice that there will be a cursor. This is very similar to a word processor. You're able to highlight your text. You can delete it by using the backspace on your keyboard and it will remove the text. I can then start typing here in the text box. Once I've entered in the text, if I come back over here to my toolbox, I'm able to change the font if I would like. I'm also able to change the size and color as well as the alignment. If I'd like to change the font, simply click here and it will give you a drop down menu. Click on the font that you would like and it will automatically change. You can also increase the size of a font by clicking here. You'll notice that as I increase the size here, it will also increase it automatically here. You do not need to do any kind of highlighting in order to make these changes to your text box. You only need to make sure that your text box has been selected. You can change the color of the font by clicking here on this arrow. This will give you a color palette that you can then choose from. Simply click on it once when you find the color that you'd like and it will make that change. Here you'll notice the alignment tools. This allows me to align the text to the center and if I'd like to make some additional edits, simply click on it again to activate the cursor. And then when you're done, simply click out of it, click on save, and it will save your changes to the thumbnail. Something else that's important to keep in mind when working with a template is that the photos that you drag and drop into each one of these slots here is going to adopt whatever effects have been placed on this photo. For example, this photo here was a vertical photo. When I placed it here in this slot, you're no longer able to see our faces. In order to change that, you come over here to the toolbox and select the adjust button. It will allow you to see the remainder of the photo and then just drag it down until you can see what you want of the photo. Then say done and now that change has been made. If you're interested in making any other changes to a page, simply click and then you'll notice that it is locked. You'll have to unlock it and if you'd like to delete it off of your page, simply click on Backspace. You can save it. You'll notice that the thumbnail has now updated and you can continue on to the next page. Once you've completed your project and you're ready for publication, what you'll want to do is go through each one of your pages, clicking on each one of them to make sure that everything is the way that you would like it. After you've looked through all of your pages and you're sure that it's the way that you would like it, simply come up here to the upper left hand corner of the screen and click on publish. After you click on publish, a little window is going to pop up with some additional information about the publishing process. If you need to make any changes or edits, you can do so by finding the finished project in your My Completed Projects tab. If you do want to continue, Go ahead and click OK. After you click OK, you will see this page here that tells you that you are ready to publish your project. Before you continue, please take a moment to preview your project for accuracy. By clicking on this link here, it will open up a new window and you'll be able to see your project. Here at the bottom of the page, you can click on the thumbnails and you'll be able to see each of the pages. Please keep in mind that if things don't look exactly how they did in the editor, that the editor will show what is going to be sent into publication. If you're concerned with what you see here in the preview, simply click out of that window and rather than click on continue, you'll simply come back into your projects and templates and go back into the project. Until you actually check this box here and click on continue, your project will not be moved from the unfinished projects. If the project looks the way that you would like it to look, 
go ahead and check this box here and click on continue. Once you click continue, it will bring you to the shopping cart area. Here is the base price. This is the price of the product that you have chosen to publish. Here it will list the total amount of pages in the project. If you have any extra pages, it will tell you the additional cost and it will indicate the price per copy. Next, you will select the quantity. Then, you will need to select if you have any credits available for this product. If I did have any credits available, you would see a drop down menu listing the total number of credits that I have available for that project. Next, you can choose some upgrade options. We have black end papers and matte covers. Next, you will want to enter in a coupon code if you have one available. After entering in the coupon code, simply click on validate and it will calculate the coupon discount, any credits used, upgrades selected, and a total price for the project. Once you've selected everything on this page to be as you would like it, click on add to cart. After selecting add to cart, you will be able to view your cart. This is the item that we just added to our shopping cart. If you'd like to add any additional projects, simply click on add a project and you will be taken to your completed project tab where you will then be able to add additional projects. Next, you will need to verify your shipping address. The shipping address that you will see is the address that is saved on file. If you would like to change it, you can do so at this time. Next, you will choose your shipping method. If there are any discounts that have been applied to your shipping, you will see a notice here. To select your shipping method, simply click on this drop down menu here. Each method is listed with a price next to it so that you can compare each of the prices. Simply click on the one that you are interested in applying to your order. Notice here at the bottom there is a timeline. From the time that an order is placed, manufacturing can take three to seven days. Shipping can take one to seven days depending on the method chosen. Here you will notice the cart totals. First we have listed our subtotal, then our shipping, followed by sales tax, and lastly a grand total. To continue through the checkout process, click on checkout. After clicking on the checkout button, it's going to take you to the payment information screen. First, you will need to enter your credit card information. Next, enter in your security code, followed by the expiration date. After entering in your credit card information, you will need to verify the billing address. If the billing address is the same as the shipping address, simply leave this box checked. If it is different, uncheck it and enter in the information. Once everything is correct on the payment information page, select continue. Once verifying all of the information, select place order. By clicking on place order, this will take your order and put it into production. Here you will see your order number, the order date, the estimated ship date, the shipping address, any items that were ordered, details, and the order totals. If you'd like to print an invoice, simply click on print invoice. After placing your order, you will receive an email to the email address listed on file indicating your order number. You can also access your order information by clicking on My Account and then clicking on Order History and you'll see here this is the order that we just placed. Keep in mind that orders can be cancelled when they are in the pending status. The pending status will be available for two to three hours after the order is placed. During that time, you will see this option here called Cancel Order. While this option is available, you can cancel your order, at which time it will stop the order from going into production, an email will be sent to the support team, and your order will be refunded within 48 business hours. Orders that are not canceled within 2-3 to three hours after they have been placed will not be able to be canceled. 
So there you have it. You've just completed your first Heritage Makers project and you're on your way to preserving your memories. If you have any questions about the site or how to use the studio, please feel free to browse through the other studio tutorials, contact your personal publishing consultant, or you can contact customer support.